and congratulations to your sister or your friend who accepted Islam. May Allah keep her steadfast. And congratulations to the person who introduced her uh, to Islam as well. The Prophet وسلم, said, if Allah guides through you one person, that is better for you than the whole world and what it contains. Now the new Muslim uh, sister has uh, a couple dogs as pets. And uh, I want to say one thing. We need to keep in mind, and, and thank you for talking about wisdom in giving da'wah. It is not possible to change entirely overnight, 100%. What will happen is if the person increases the level of his or her Iman as a result of that, it will be easier for him or her to give up on whatever Allah prohibited, even if they were so attached to it. You're calling from United Arab Emirates, and I remember listening to uh, Brother uh, Yusuf Islam, formerly known as Cat Stephen. While we're giving a lecture together in University of Houston in Texas, and when somebody asked him this question and said, "You know, you are an icon in music and singing. I mean, it was your life. How were you able to quit all of that?" He said, "I found something sweeter, something that sounds much better. Ever since I heard the Quran, it replaced all of that. The, enjoying the Quran has covered all my needs." So basically, you need to find the alternative. So what would be the alternative for having a dog or as a pet or whatever? Gradually, once the sister knows how to pray, inshallah, how to make wudu and how to pray, then she gets in touch with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once she understands that there's something called impurities, najasa, that will ban her from praying, will require her to wash several times. In addition to, if you simply pull um, pull out a research or a scientific research about why dogs are impure, you know, and hand it over to them and uh, to her, and you will find that, for instance, in uh, if you can, if you go to a website which is called Kalamullah or the the, the booklet which is called a brief illustrated guide, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, to Islam, you will find plenty of work uh, in this regard. Then hand it over to her. Later on, talk about that keeping a dog at home reduces the reward of the person that much every day. And it does not mean that we torture dogs or we starve them or we kill them. No. Meanwhile, you talk about how the Prophet ﷺ told us about a woman who was one day a prostitute and she entered paradise because she gave the wara to a stray dog. So there is a big difference between feeding the dog and looking after uh, animals in general and keeping a dog as a pet at home, okay? So by taking it gradually and step by step, number one, raise the level of Iman. Strengthen the ties between the person, especially the new Muslim, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have to understand why am I doing this? Why? Because Allah said, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You do not expect a person who accepted Islam today to change 100% overnight, you know, to quit watching movies or going out or, you know, so gradually, inshallah, azzajal. There are some people who chose Islam on their own after making an effort in studying Islam. And those people I have witnessed by myself that they change overnight 100%. One of them, one of them was fired. He had uh, recently accepted Islam and he was looking for a job. And the person in the Islamic community where I was visiting was the Mu'adhin. And the secretary of the community said, I will give you a job in one of my shops. He went to his store and he was selling liquor, lotto tickets, cigarettes, and pork sandwiches and all of that. So this brand new Muslim who's Christian before said, I'm sorry, I won't be able to work here because I heard and I studied that it is haram to sell liquor. It is haram to eat and sell pork and so on. So he was new to Islam and he was teaching somebody who was born in Islam. The level of Iman determines the reception of the person to the commands of Allah and the prohibitions and how would he comply with that.